Hello and welcome to another Ask Nera to Joy video. I have a new model with me today. Her name is Lila and I'm excited because she has got um, the type of skin that I like to work on because she's got a few different issues with her skin. So we're going to um, we're going to be working on the fact that her skin, she's a drier skin, she has very little oil, very little sebaceous activity around the nose area, but she's got a few little brown spots by the eye, particularly on her driver's side by the eye up here. Um, very hardly any on this side, but certainly more on this side. So we're going to be doing some lightening and brightening with her brown spots around her eyes. But just to really sort of help with the texture and the tone in her skin to firm it up, to work on her neck area as well, but really hydrate and build those levels. And we're going to, uh, we're going to strengthen them because her skin is a thinner skin, but we want to make it strong. We want to hydrate those levels and we want to lighten up some of these little lines on her forehead. So we have um, a few things we're going to be working on with Lila today. So we're going to get started. I'm actually going to use the milk cleanser on her today. I like to have a couple of different cleansers when I'm working on models because sometimes, particularly in the winter months when it's colder, it's nice to have a milky cleanser. So we're going to start with a milky cleanser and, uh, and cleanse off her skin. So here we are, we have our milk cleanser. We're going to be cleansing off Lila's skin. It is uh, winter over here right now, so it's nice to be using a milk cleanser in the winter months. This one has a little bit of shea butter in it. It also has rosehip oil, and it's just a really nice cleanser. Lila has very little oil. She has just a few tiny little blackheads on only half of her nose. She doesn't even have blackheads on her the whole nose area. She just has it on the very tip here. So she is what we call almost a true dry skin. Very little oil in her skin. And do some really nice hydrating on Lila today and just to really sort of work that neck area well. We know how important massage is. It really stimulates muscle tone and it brings oxygen to the blood. So we want to massage her skin a lot because it's what's gonna make her skin firmer. And her skin will, uh, the coloring will be much better too because it's bringing oxygen to the blood as well. So we wanna really give Lila a good massage today. She has a tiny little bit of sensitivity on her cheeks. But after I cleanse her skin, I'm going to put some eye goggles over her eyes and bring the light down and have a look. I'm using my disposable sponges to take off the milk cleanser. What's really nice about the milk cleanser is it leaves a little bit of a film on the skin. And that's really nice when a skin is dry. So if I touch her skin, I can feel that she's got a little something there. So it's, it's cleansed her skin well, but it's also, I can feel that it's leaving a little film there, which is nice, it's that protective layer as well. So on a sensitive skin and on a dry skin, you certainly want to be hydrating it and cleaning it at the same time. So that's really nice to, to start out our treatment there. Okay, we're gonna put some goggles over her eyes and bring the light down and have a look at her skin. So what we have, I've looked uh, through the make lamp at Lila's skin. As I said earlier, she has blackheads just on half of her nose, just on the tip area there. So she really doesn't have hardly any oil in her skin whatsoever. She's pretty much a true dry skin. I am going to start working and start layering with different serums right now. And I'm going to actually uh, just put on a serum and then put a hydrating treatment over top of that. Um, and then we're going to do a, a light little exfoliation with that as well. So we're gonna layer a little bit and work in the exfoliant uh, after I've added some product to the skin. Just because she doesn't really need to have a strong exfoliation and I don't want to put anything too stingy on her skin. It's just not necessary at this time in the treatment. So I'm adding a couple of serums here. Uh, one is my Q-flavonoid and the other one is a biorejuvenating. 
it um, is just going to put a little bit of a film on the skin before I put the exfoliant on. I certainly don't want to be doing a strong exfoliation on Lila's skin. She just doesn't need it. So we are just going to put a, a little serum on here and work this in for a moment before I put my exfoliation product on. You know, you don't have to exfoliate everybody's skin. It's not necessary for a lot of skin types, especially if they're not surface dry. So it's, um, Lila's skin is actually not too surface dry, even though underneath her levels are dry. Just the very outer layer is not really surface dry. So we don't need to be doing anything too strong and aggressive on her skin. So we've got a couple of serums on there now and they've soaked into the skin. And now we're going to do a very mild exfoliation on her. So here we have the exfoliating mask, a little bit of healing gel. I'm gonna mix them together. We don't wanna be mixing them together over her eyes because we wanna make sure that nothing is splashing into any areas that uh, don't need to be. And certainly we need to be careful always of our client's eye area. So you wanna make sure that you're not mixing anything directly over their eyes. So here we go, we're just laying this on. And again, I'm going to work this into her skin for a minute and you want to make sure your clients keep their eyes closed too so if they uh, want them to be relaxing but also keeping their eyes closed so that uh, nothing's getting in there. As you start to work with different products around the nose area and close to the eyes it's, uh, it's good to have them keep their eyes closed. So I'm just going to work this into the skin remembering we've got those couple of layers of serums on underneath it and we also did a milk cleanser on her skin today. So that also left a film on the skin. But as I said, I don't want to use anything too strong on her at this point, it's not necessary. I will at a later date be doing a, an alpha hydroxy acid on her. And that will be to uh, help lighten, lessen the depths of some wrinkles, as well as just tighten up those levels underneath when it gets to the fibroblast cells and really help to strengthen the skin from inside. Okay, so we've worked that exfoliating product into the skin and now we're going to remove it. This particular exfoliator has lemon peel powder, it has a little bit of chamomile, it has the papyrin enzyme papwin, and it also has a little glycolic in there. I'm gonna cool down the towels a little bit. We don't want it to be too hot. My towels are quite yellow because of the Q-flavonoid. Okay, so we've taken off the exfoliant, and now we're going to start putting in some more treatment serums and we're also going to put some good hydrating products around her eyes. So I've got my Q-flavonoid here. I'm going to put this on first and we're going to be putting it all over the face. I'm gonna also put it up right up under the eye area and on her eyelids as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put some more of that biorejuvenating back onto her face and I'm gonna mix a little bit of a retinol, uh, which is a retinol oil, the retinol formula with it. And we're going to start working that in. The retinols are great because they really stimulate fibroblast cells. And when you're working on a mature skin or a skin that has pitting or scarring, areas that you really want to help strengthen, but you, you want to help change the texture, you want to work with something like a retinol because retinols are really great in how they lessen the depth of wrinkles. They also stimulate fibroblast cells, so it changes the skin. So to make a difference to the skin and to make a skin more youthful, you really have to work with retinols or alpha hydroxy acids. And in today I'm going to start the massage with retinols and just work this into the skin really well. And I'm going to be using it quite close up around the eye area as well. Now retinols are great in that they don't sting. An alpha hydroxy acid very often tingles on the skin a little bit. The more buffered it is, the less it will sting. So buffered means it will be uh, very often in a cream form or a gel form. The more liquidy a alpha hydroxy acid is, the more it's gonna be tingly on the skin. But, um, but retinols do not sting when you put them on.
So here we are, we're going to just work this in, we're going to do a really, just work these serums into the skin, do a really nice massage on Lila's skin and then we're going to be adding our hydrating mask as our massage cream to continue with the massage here. Now as you know I'm not a huge believer in having a lot of equipment. I have a steamer and I have a hot cabbie and I have a Maggie light. I do happen to have an infrared lamp and I also happen to have a high frequency which I don't use that often and I am a big believer in massaging the skin because I know the benefits from having massage myself but also working with clients for 40 years the benefits of massage are just extraordinary and they change people's skin and that's what we want. We want to change the skin, we want to make it healthy, we want to keep everything moving so that uh, everything is being flushed out and not being still and stagnant. We want to keep things moving in the body and it's just really important to have a really pretty dewy skin. Uh, you need to have movement and you need to massage it and keep things moving underneath. So we've worked in the serums and the skin has absorbed it very nicely. Lila's levels are a little bit dehydrated. She was not dehydrated on the surface, but underneath her levels are a little bit dehydrated. So we want to just really feed the skin and work in some good products here. So this is my hydrating mask and I'm going to work this in now. I like the hydrating mask as my massage cream because it, uh, it really is very hydrating to the skin and I like to use it as my massage cream uh, very much, even more so than my massage cream. I prefer to use the hydrating mask. So we're just going to work this in and I'm going to do quite a lengthy massage on Lila today. I've talked about this in other videos, but if you have not heard what I'm going to say before, then that's terrific. It is the importance of massage because I've had regular body massages myself. The skin on my torso and my legs is not only very soft, but it really tones the skin. So massage is something that really does tone the skin. It makes the skin strong. So anybody who's spent a lot of time in the sun you know that even if you are a lean and a muscular person and you exercise, you know you've got muscle, good muscle tone underneath, but the out, outer skin, the skin itself, is very loose. So the older we get, of course that happens, but also if you've spent time in the sun, the skin will be loose. So even though you might have muscle underneath, the skin itself needs massaging and that's what firms and tightens a loose skin is massage. So it's really important to massage the skin and it has completely changed my body actually just having massage because it's it's made my skin just so smooth and more toned and it's so great and I'm a huge 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 believer in massages and I tell a lot of people uh, a lot of my clients, um, you know, it's just really important because it, it not only massages the organs and moves the lymphatic system, which we know is flushing and, you know, ridding of toxins in our body, but just what it does to the quality of the skin and just how it makes the skin sort of more youthful is really amazing. So if you're not someone who's having regular massages, then you know, somehow if you can make it a priority and do that, you will see a difference in your skin tone. So it's a very, very beneficial um, treatment to do, uh, both for your organs and to be moving that lymphatic system and keeping everything healthy, and then on the outside, just keeping the skin really pretty and toned. It's definitely worth uh, having massages on a regular basis if you can do that. And I also notice that more and more salons are doing longer massages in their, their facial treatments. And there are some salons that actually specialize in just massage, uh, which, you know, again, I'm a huge believer in because that's what I choose to do myself. And I choose to massage the skin a lot because I see really good results with that. So that is why I'm not uh, 
someone who works a lot with different equipment is that I always feel like, number one, I don't have time to be doing and working with different equipment in a facial treatment because I'm either extracting and doing a lot of the cleaning on people's skin or I'm working with alpha hydroxy acids and just things that are going to really get to the fibroblast cells and change the skin, make pores smaller, light and brown spots and that's what the alpha hydroxy acids do or I'm massaging the skin and that is what keeps the skin toned and youthful. So we do want to be constantly working on our clients and have our hands on them because uh, it not only feels good, it's, uh, it makes a difference to their skin. Now there are three different kinds of wrinkles. We have premature lines and a lot of the things, these premature lines are things that we Estes can work with. Uh, we have expression lines, which is not something that we Estes can work with so well. And we also have the lines that form as a result of the collagen and elastin, uh, as it doesn't produce as quickly as we get older. So what, uh, what's important again is to work with products that stimulate fibroblast cells, because that will help to lessen the depth of a wrinkle and that's our retinols and our alpha hydroxy acids. And, uh, and also, you know, really for the 11s that people complain about right here between the brows, when you have an expression line, it's, it's nice to be made conscious of it if you can maybe not use that expression as heavily as you might on a regular basis. But sometimes having a little bit of Botox certainly makes a huge difference when you have um, something like those 11s that really just stops and, uh, and it paralyzes that muscle, which sounds scary, uh, and in some cases could be scary. But if you're doing just a little bit, and I always say, you know, everything in moderation, then I myself do have a little bit on my forehead, Botox, and I really believe that um, it's great. So I am a huge Botox fan. Uh, as I said, everything in moderation. I think that you can certainly get carried away with it when you start working and doing a lot um, from here down. Uh, it's uh, people that do too much in the face it always is interesting when someone goes to smile because then you just see teeth and no wrinkles. Mm -hmm. But it's often wherever you, if you have a wrinkle that you have done with Botox, then the, and you go to smile or have any form of an expression, a wrinkle does generally have to form somewhere. So it may come up somewhere else. And that's why a lot of the time when people have Botox done around the eyes, and especially around this part of the eye, they end up with these little bunny lines here either side of the nose. So it's, um, you know, it's important to um, communicate well with your dermatologist or your facial plastic surgeon who is ever giving you your Botox and, uh, and just let them know, again, everything in moderation is sometimes better, especially when you're starting out. You just want to make sure that you're, um, that everything is looking as normal as possible and you're not overdoing it because sometimes, as I said, if you're doing too much and you're causing too much stillness in some areas, then you will get, you will create wrinkles in other areas that uh, uh, not, it's not great either. So just, again, everything in moderation and I always think that's a really good, uh, good way to go. When I massage, my movements going up is always a lot stronger than my movements going down. So it's, uh, you want to be mostly massaging upwards and putting your effort into the upward motion. I do quite a lot of massage around the neck area as well. I think that's really important to uh, help with our jarling and just to help with the neck, the skin on the neck. So it's, uh, it's nice to do a good massage on the neck area as well. Okay, we've worked in uh, some treatment products and I'm just very lightly going to remove uh, the excess 
and we're going to just do a very light little extraction on those few blackheads on the tip of Lila's nose. So we're going to do that right now. Don't want to take all this good stuff off. So we just did a very light little cleaning on the tip of uh, Lila's nose and just got rid of a couple of little blackheads there. It's, uh, she has next to nothing in the blackhead department, which uh, must be really wonderful. <laughs> Now what I have here is the fruit complex number one. I'm going to be using that all over her face and her neck. This is an alpha hydroxy acid, so it does sting a little bit. It's important, um, it does help to lighten brown spots and she has a little bit around her eye area. Already her eye area does look a little lighter because we've been using the Q-flavonoid, which also aids in lightening and brightening the skin. So this is going to sting a little bit on her skin. We want to make sure we put it in uh, the areas where she has s some of the slightly deeper lines. So we want to make sure we're really getting it into the line. When you're putting it on these vertical lines on the forehead, we want to go with that and make sure that we're getting to the bottom of the vertical line. And the same with around the eye area. We just want to make sure that we're really sort of working it in around the eye area very well and again these are a lot of expression lines here but we want to get that alpha hydroxy acid in there just to stimulate those live cells and just help lighten those wrinkles. Her lip area is really good she hardly has any vertical lines at all on her lip which is really quite unusual actually she's got a really good lip uh, the skin around her lip is very, very good. So again, we're just going to get that into this. I'm going to get quite, uh, quite close around her eyes with this. And it is going to be stinging a little bit because it is an alpha hydroxy acid. So it's a complex of your glycolic, lactic, malic, tartaric and citrus. And the great thing about when you work with a complex of your alpha hydroxy acids is they are all different weight and size. So what that means is that it gets to different levels within the skin and that's really important when you're working with skin as a whole. You want to be able to get to all the different levels because that's what ke keeps the skin strong and sturdy. So we want to make sure that we're working on all the levels in the skin and, uh, and that's really important for keeping the skin youthful. So we're going to leave this on Lila's skin for a few minutes and we'll be back to take that off shortly too. So we are back to take off the fruit complex number one on Lila's skin. It, uh, it strengthens the skin and I can see her skin just looks so much better already. We've sort of really stimulated some levels there in her skin and it just looks so much better already. So I'm just taking it off with cooler sponges. Not too hot, the water, we don't want it to be too hot. Okay, now we're going to put a little healing gel on because her skin will be a little bit tingly from the, uh, the alpha hydroxy acid. And now what I'm going to do now that I've got my alpha hydroxy acid off the face, I'm going to put a very tiny amount of retinol and a small amount of the Q-flavonoid on the skin and then I'm going to put a mask over top. So here's my retinol and my Q-flavonoid and we're going to work this into the skin. Again, another active product. The retinol is another active product. It gets to fibroblast cells. So we're going to work this into the skin and then we are going to layer a mask over top of it. And I'm going to do the Pearl Silk Mask on Lila's skin because it's going to help brighten up some of these little brown spots and already they are looking really nice but we're going to do a pearl silk on her. Okay so I have my two packets of um, for my pearl silk mask that I'm going to be mixing together. I'm going to prepare Lila's skin before we add the water to the two dry powders. So we're going to put tissue around here on the sides and I'm going to put a little bit of the eye gel around her eyes, not double dipping, using the other end of the Q-tip. 
and then we're going to just lay this over the eyes. And now we're going to mix the water in with the two dry powders. Now this is a really nice hydrating treatment that we're doing on Lila, but it's more than just a hydrating treatment. It's also a firming treatment and a brightening treatment because we've done the, the alpha hydroxy acid, so that works on tightening the skin as well as lessening the depth of the wrinkle and also lightening her brown spots. And then we've also done, we've got a little retinol on her skin now with the Q flavonoid. And again, that also works on, it's a different molecular uh, structure to your alpha hydroxy acids because it's a, a vitamin A grouping but it, uh, it all works on wrinkles and it all works on shrinking pore size and uh, strengthening the skin and tightening the skin and it also works on lightening the brown spots which is <coughs> really important. So here we have our pearl silk mask and I'm going to pour this onto her skin. This is a professional mask, treatment mask, and it doesn't set really, really tight. It sets, but it is a little bit rubbery, so it's not as uncomfortable as some of the really tight masks that set really tight. When clients get a little claustrophobic with those really tight masks, it's, um, this one here is, um, it's very comfortable, it's not, it doesn't feel super heavy on the face and nor does it feel really tight and uncomfortable when it dries, which is nice because some people get a little claustrophobic with those really heavy masks and the ones that sit really tight on the skin. Okay, so we have it on and I'm going to just put some tissue over the top so that I will be able to press down and stop it from running too much more. And I'm just going to tear a little strip and we're going to put this piece just above her lip here. Like that. That's nice to just mold it to the face. Okay, and we're gonna leave that on about eight to 10 minutes and we'll be back shortly to take it off. So we're here ready to take off Lila's mask. We've left it on about eight minutes and this was the pearl silk mask. So we're going to take it off now and have a look at how fabulous her skin looks underneath. So again, we get those little bits around the sides of the nose and the hairline. So her skin looks really great and we've lightened up, you can see a little bit, we've lightened up those brown spots on the side already. Her skin feels firmer to me, I can tell it's different and that's a real big plus. So we've got more hydrated levels underneath but we've also got a firmer skin. The wrinkles on her forehead look less deep as well which is really nice and we'll take some uh, more pictures, still pictures afterwards so you can have a look at the the before and afters from her first treatment. I'm putting a little bit of the Q flavonoid on right now. We're going to put a little bit more of the retinol on her skin because she'll be going home and leaving that on this evening. So we'll put a little bit of that on and then her nighttime moisturizer over top of it. But her skin feels so good. It's not moving as much with my hands. It uh, definitely feels very different than when we first started. And that was just a little over an hour ago. So see what you can do in such a short time. So we're putting our retinal formula on, which is quite yellow. And we're putting that on. I put a little bit of the eye cream on now too. I'm a big believer in layering and just leaving stuff on the skin, you know, be it serums, be it moisturizers, it's really important to layer and just feel 
like you've got something on your skin. If you touch my skin at any point throughout the day, it always feels almost a little bit sticky, which I know doesn't sound possibly great, but it uh, it's very comfortable and it's nice to feel that you've got something on your skin to protect you from, protect your skin from the environment or lighting or air conditioning. And it's really important to keep your skin layered and hydrated and uh, that's what keeps your skin younger longer so it's very important and now we are putting on her nighttime treatment product and I'm going to be giving her a collection of items to be taking home to use at home as her regimen and most of what I'm going to be giving her is going to be the Rejuvi Plus line which is the line that we have for the 3540 plus it's a really nice line it has a little bit more in it and uh, it really is a, a great um, treatment line okay so Lila's all done so I said we will be taking some still pictures so you'll be able to see the before and afters but uh, but she's all done and her skin feels great so she's going to be just going home. It's quite late over here. She will be sleeping with what she has on her skin. And then she has her home care regimen that uh, she'll be using on a daily basis at home too. Thank you so much, Lila, for joining us today, coming in here and being a, our model. And thank you all for being back here with me to watch another Ask Nerida Joy video. And I know we'll be back to see you all again soon. Bye-bye.